Today on FAQ Fridays, we're going to be discussing how often to attach solar panels to a metal roof. My name is Curtis Ward with S5. Today I welcome back Nick Hawley, S5's Product Development Manager. Nick, thanks for taking the time to come back on the show with us. Yeah, absolutely. The solar industry is growing and according to SIA or the Solar Energy Industries Association, US PV capacity is expected to double by 2024. And it's expected that over 15 gigawatts of PV capacity will be installed annually. There are now 64.2 gigawatts of installed solar capacity in the United States. That's enough to power 12.3 plus million homes or enough to charge every smartphone on the planet. There is a lot of factors that affect how often an installer should attach modules to a metal roof. A popular question that our technical support team receives is how often should I attach S5 clamps when installing so my solar panels? And to answer this, we need to dig into the science behind how metal roofs are attached to the structure. And by the way, these principles involved apply whether using rail, tilted rack, or a direct attachment. And they apply to any metal roof attachment product, not just S5. So Nick, how often do I have to attach my clamps or brackets when installing a PV array onto my metal roof? Attachment frequency and spacing is driven primarily by wind, but also by snow loads that impose forces on the array. Some topics we'll discuss include load chain and its weakest link, load distribution into the roof and substructure, standing seam roof clips attachment and how the loads are transferred to the structure, face attached roofs and sheeting only bracket attachments, the importance of spreading load regardless of mounting method, and we're also going to touch on UL2703 mechanical load testing. Alright. Alright Nick, so let's jump right in. Can you explain to us how the loads imposed on a solar array affect a metal roof? The modular array transfers forces through its mounting structure or hardware into the roof and roof substructure. So any roof mounted solar array creates a load chain that is only as strong as its weakest link. We may presume that the roof was adequately designed and attached to begin with, but we should be concerned that we do not do something with our mounting that jeopardizes the roof's integrity as originally designed and installed. Any mounting system point loads the roof or structure at each location of array attachment. Metal roofing is different than most other types of roofing in that the metal panels have some capacity or beam strength to carry and transfer the loads applied to them through their attachment to and into the building substructure. This makes a metal roof quite convenient for solar installations because it lends itself to much easier, more plentiful and cost-effective attachment points and can reduce each point load, thus more uniform load distribution and with many metal roofs, the attachment is also penetration free. So can you explain a little more about this load chain and as well as teach us a little bit more about how a metal roof is attached to the building structure? Yeah, we must first identify that there are two main types of metal roofing, standing seam and face attached. Each is attached to the building structure differently. A standing seam roof is attached to the building structure via clips concealed beneath the roof sheathing. The clips are designed to interlock with a specific seam type and dimensioning and also to allow for thermal response of the roof panels. The clips are located within each seam and screwed to the building's structural deck or purlins. In the case of residential construction, they're generally fastened to the wood deck at two foot or closer spacings. With typical metal building construction, the clips are fastened to each steel purlin, most often spaced at five feet on center. Loads pass from the module through its anchorage to the rack, rail, or roof panels, then through the clips and into the substructure. Each of these components then are links in the load chain. I should mention that standing seam roofs also allow for penetration-free attachment of solar arrays. A face attached or exposed fasten roof is attached much differently. It's done with sheet metal screws through the face of the roof and directly into the structure. 
The heads of the fasteners can be seen all over the roof, hence the name exposed fastener. When attaching a solar array to this style of roof, brackets are either fastened into the roof sheeting only, or they're fastened through the sheeting and into the substructure. This type of roof has fewer links in the load chain, but each is still critical. Attachment cannot be made without penetration, so waterproofing also becomes critical. In both cases, the roof panels carry positive and negative loads into the structure via the roof panel's beam strength and the panel's attachment to the structure. In the case of standing seam, the negative loads are carried through the panel's attachment clips to the deck, whereas with face attached panels, those loads are carried directly to the deck at every screw location. When point loading the roof with solar arrays, care must be taken that the point loads do not exceed the strength of the attachment of the roof to the building structure or the flexural strength of the roof, the roof panels itself. With S5 products, the attachment component is rarely the weak link in the load chain, but rather the flexural strength of the roof panel seam or the attachment of the roof to the building. So how many clamps are needed per module for a PV array? Well, that's a pretty broad question, Kurt. Um, the loads imposed on modules that dictate frequency of attachment are determined from conditions such as wind speed, building or roof dimensions, snow, seismic considerations, and so they vary widely, and they're site-specific. ASC 7 is a great engineering resource for load calculations that affect PV arrays. UL2703 is a standard for safety concerning PV mounting systems. The standard investigates many aspects of the mounting hardware, including mechanical loading. The PV kit is load tested with many different modules and carries a load rating for uplift, downforce, and downslope loading conditions. The S5 PV kit is listed to UL2703. This rating can be found in the Metal Roof Innovations QIMS report issued by UL and can be used as a guideline for determining number of attachments. It can also be found in the Solar Manual for PV Kit 2.0. For more information on UL2703, click on the link in the top right corner. Whatever the variables dictate, in general, the module producer requires at least four points of attachment for his module. Of course, modules share attachment points, so the net result is two shared attachment points per module plus edge conditions. The attachment to the roof should be no less frequent. The idea is that the more attachments to the roof, the more load is diminished at each attachment point. Will the clamp spacing be different when using the S5 PV kit than when using rails? Well, it shouldn't be, but it often is. We've seen many cases where the attachment of the rail is based solely on the spanning capacity of the rail with no regard to the point loads that are being delivered into the roof. This can result with point loads to the roof being excessive and the roof system is overstressed. So no matter what the specific mounting method, rail, rack, or direct attach, the same objective applies. No less attachment frequency than two times per module side. If we have 150 modules, we should have no fewer than 300 points of attachment plus edge conditions in all three cases. In fact, with tilted systems, the number will probably increase due to the wind effects on those systems. When modules are direct attached using our PV Kit 2.0, it is actually impossible to attach the roof any less frequently than two times for each module side. In areas with increased wind pressures or other forces, more attachments may be necessary for all mounting methods. With PV Kit, it's a piece of cake to do that with very little added cost because modules are in the landscape orientation traversing multiple ribs. When rail mounting, you should have to add rails, but when using PV kit, the seams or ribs of the roof act as the rail. Each time a seam or rib is traversed by a module, there's an opportunity to attach to the roof and to the module at the same time. Well, thank you, Nick, for taking the time out of your day and come back on the show for us. Yeah, thanks for having me back on the show. And thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more great resources. And if you have a question that you want answered, comment down in the comment section below. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next Friday. It double by 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Back on the show. <laughs> so Nick, 
How how often do I have to attach my solar? <laughs> <laughs> I did better the first time. Hey. <laughs>